hello, how are you today? All right, so I was talking with some friends and, uh, you know, kind of decided to do a very, very basic video, Ships 101, you could say. Now, I play differently than some players. I play the same as other players. So, I'm not really going to teach you how to play. I'm just going to try to show you some basics of the game that will make you a little bit better and uh, hopefully allow you to understand a little bit more about what's going on um, in the game and how ships react, where to find some information, and um, just kind of look into how the game is. Um, I did this a little bit last night in my stream, um, but this stream is specifically for this, and I will be posting it to my YouTube channel so that people can kind of just go there when they want to get a quick breakdown of how things work. So the first thing, uh, and this is from a new player's perspective or a player that is maybe struggling, right? So um, first thing you need to look at, right, is take a ship. Any old ship will do. Um, let's go to a ship that you may be familiar with. You know, if you're kind of a newer player, you know, you're going to be hanging around in the tier three, tier four. So let's, let's look at a ship, right? Now, um, one thing you want to do is, you know, obviously you're not going to have the commanders I do. If you're new, you're, you're going to get just a basic commander. We'll go over commanders in a second, but let's, let's take a look at ships, right? Because this is where everybody's interest is, is in the ships. And this is a British ship. It's an Orion. It's a battleship. You can tell it's a battleship because up there by its name, or even on the little tabs down here in the bottom where you select your ship, it's a ship symbol with two lines through it. Two lines, battleship. Right here. We have a little triangle on the V-170 here. Destroyer. One line, whew, that is a cruiser. Right here, you have the T through the ship. That is a aircraft carrier. Okay, that's important to know when you're out playing so you kind of know what you're up against. All right, so when you get a new ship, the first thing you should do is familiarize yourself with it. And you do that by hitting, I'm an Xbox player, but you want to hit ship options, which is X for me upgrades and loadout, and then you'll bumper over to your stats, right? And first thing you want to look at is, okay, I have uh, my armor, you know, it's kind of a broad armor, 13 to 305 millimeter, so many hit points, torpedo damage reduction, 13%. That could be important to know because you know, okay, I'm going to take a torp, but I have, you know, maybe I have American, you know, 50% reduction, whatever, right? The next thing that's really important is your guns. 343 millimeter guns, which are probably 14 inch. Um, yeah, be real close. Um, 13, 14 inch guns. And 30 second reload, you know, maximum AP shell damage, 10,450. HE shell damage with a 40% chance, you know, 4,700 with a 47% chance of setting a fire. 40% uh, is, is pretty high. Um, but again, again, you're only slinging it every 30 seconds, right? So, you know, eh. AA defense. <clears throat> 42, uh, an overall rating of 42 is pretty low. Um, a good one, you know, you get into the higher tier ships, they're going to be running 99 to 100 on their AA defense, and they're pretty hard to, you're going to lose, if you're a carrier player, you're going to lose your whole squadron to get maybe a torpedo. Um, so that's something to be aware of that, you know, carriers could be a problem for you. At this tier, tier three, carriers don't hit very hard. Even at higher tiers, they don't necessarily hit very hard. They're just an inconvenience if they cause a flood or a fire. Um, maneuverability, 20.4 knots, slow, big turning radius, slow rudder shift time at 13.2 seconds. These are just things to kind of familiarize yourself with, right? Um, detectability, your concealment on a BB is not necessarily something you really care too much about. Um, they're going to know you're there one way or another. That's more of a destroyer thing, and we'll cover that. But this is a very important window right here. Go to your armor. Get familiar with your armor and what this ship looks like and how its armor scheme works. And also, um, if you're curious, you know, you see, like, challenges to get citadels, you know, where is that citadel? What is the citadel? Well, the citadel is an important part of the ship, right? That's where your boiler rooms lie. You know, that's, it's important. And to find it, you can go through and you can turn these armor groups off by toggling armor and then just toggling over with your left stick. And there's your citadel, right? It's this one right here. It sits down on the bottom. You can kind of see it there. Um, the colors. 
And here, if I go like that, that kind of flashes it a little bit. There's your Citadel. It, this ship has a really funky Citadel. Um, it doesn't have very good armor on it. Um, so if I was going to shoot this ship, I would want to aim between all the turrets. I would actually try to slot my shells kind of right there in the center of my screen, right? Waterline, plunge them into that citadel below, um, between the smokestacks, center of the ship. Um, hey, what's up, uh, Turtle? Glad you could stop by. I got to turn that off. <clears throat> um, new bot, got to fix that. But I'm just making the uh, training video we were kind of talking about earlier. So glad you stopped by. Um, let's see. Where was I? Here is... Uh, so, yeah. So here's your citadel, right? And this is an important part of your ship to protect as well. And that's why you don't want to go flat broadside to other battleships in pretty much any ship that you're in. Because they're going to they're gonna catch that and they're going to mess you up. So, um... Yeah, there's your armor scheme. Now, ships do have different layers of armor, and as you can see here, this torpedo belt casemate, which is that orange thing there. Uh, let's turn that off. Here you go, casemate armor. That's your superstructure, auxiliary. Nobody cares about that. Um, torpedo protection isn't very good on this thing. Um, you know, casemate armor is pretty thick, but that actually helps the shell's arm in a lot of circumstances. So they're not going to get those penetrate. They're not going to get the overpens. Um, What do you mean by... Oh, that's a good... You know, very good. Thank you, Turtle. So what I mean by broadside is showing your full flat just like this. If I was an enemy looking at you, um, I'm aiming at you and you're sitting just like this to me, that's broadside. You're sitting broadside to me. And what that does is it lets, gives me a night, my shells a nice straight trajectory right into your armor and that lets them pierce it. As opposed to being angled. When we talk about angled, and this is like... Um, a ship perspective, if you're in that Orion and I'm looking at you and you stay angled to me like this, my shells are more likely to bounce off your tub if they're not big enough to pierce your armor. And we'll kind of go over over that. I don't want to overload you with um, information about how the shells work. You're going to figure that out, but I'll give you some basic instruction on that. But So when we say angle, we mean get an angle to your enemy. Keep them like this. Bow tank, straight on. Just go straight at them. Let them shatter their shells off you. They're going to have to hit you in the superstructure. And the superstructure, in case you didn't know, is that blue stuff, right? There's your superstructures. It looks different on different ships. Um, a very good example would be like a Tier 7. They have pretty big superstructures because they're big ships. Um, Massachusetts would be a good one. We'll go to its armor scheme, see the light blue stuff there. There's your superstructure. So if this monster is coming at you, and it has pretty damn good armor, um, you're going to want to, and if it's doing this, load HE, shoot it in its superstructure. That's all you can do to it. Um, if it's angled, load HE, shoot it in the superstructure. If it's sitting flat broadside to you like this, you know, you're going to have to, you can load AP and hit it in its tub, and if you have big enough shells, which would be over 16 inch, 406 millimeter, um, you will penetrate it. Um, if you have 15 inch, you might penetrate it, depending on your commander setup, RNG, and if you did a little dance and if you thank the gods, um, because it does have pretty good armor. It has 32 millimeter to 38 millimeter torpedo protection. Um, the casemate's pretty thick, and also its, uh, its citadel sits low in the water, so you're going to have to plunge it in. Plunging fire is when shells kind of, they go up and then they come down on top of a ship. And you can kind of see how the armor on the top of the Citadel is kind of a light blue. So you want to kind of try to sneak it in on top. But that's difficult because you have the casemate armor. <laughs> that is pretty thick and sits down on it. So, you know, uh, American BBs are generally pretty easy to citadel. The Massachusetts and Alabama are a little bit harder, but it can definitely be done if you're sitting, you know, like this to somebody and they have, you know, 15, 16 inch guns. They're gonna, they're probably gonna get some citadels on you, especially 16 um, to the 18s, you know, like the Yamato, the Republic, the Georgia, other Ameri you know, Iowa's, Massachusetts, Alabama's, those are all running those 16 inch guns and they're gonna, they're gonna get a piece of you. Um, so <clears throat> you're probably, so, you're probably thinking, all right, so how do I know if a ship can, you know, pierce my armor or not? And 
if they have big enough guns, then you can't bow tank them. If you're in a Susia, you can see that has 25 to 26 millimeter armor on its bow. Um, that Citadel you know, has a hump in it. So you can angle if you want, but if you're in a Massachusetts or something with a 16 inch gun, they can, they can't, the, uh, they can't defeat your guns, right? Your armor cannot defeat the shells. They will defeat your armor. And that is calculated by a, a funky formula, right? So an AP shell will always penetrate armor that is either inferior or equal to 14.3 of its caliber regardless of distance and angle. I'm reading this because I can't remember all this stuff. So that would be um, you take your shell type, a 406, and you... <laughs> <laughs> this is where the weirdness gets in. You would take 406 millimeter and you divide it by 14.3. You come up with 28.39, like, I think. So 28.4. So it can defeat 28.4 millimeter armor and down no matter what. No, it doesn't matter where you're at. It doesn't matter if you're angled, going away, running scared, going bow on. That shell will go right through this armor. Now you can get lucky, you can get ricochets um, or a bounce, but if it hits, it won't shatter, it will go through. Um, so that's what we need. Now an HE shell um, will always penetrate armor that's either inferior or equal to one sixth of its caliber regardless of the distance. So you take, you know, uh, 200, like 406 and you would you know, divide it by six and get a sixth of it, and that would tell you how many millimeter it can go through, basically. And that's generally kind of a, a you know, a uh, just a, it's a it's a different mechanic. Um, you know, HEs are gonna shatter on pretty much all battleship tubs. You shoot them in the superstructure, you eat your fires. That's what they're good for. Um, you take a 406 millimeter HE round, it will penetrate this uh, just because it's so much bigger, right? Because um, this is a paper-thin ship. It's a light cruiser. So there's kind of how you find your armor, how armor kind of works. You want to how the angling thing kind of works, bow tanking, sitting flat broadside. There's kind of your basics on that. And I'm not going to teach you how to play the game, but this will give you those basics for you to kind of understand some of the mechanics. You know, you look at some of these ships, they have like five layers of armor on them you know when you look at trying to get to its citadel you got to go through its torpedo belt then you got to go through its casemate armor and then there's a citadel on this one you know um there's just funky little things like that you know if you're in close on something like this and you're over penning and you can tell how you're over penning by the ribbons that it gives you and we'll kind of we'll look at that i'll play a game and kind of try to show you on the fly you know you want to try to shoot them in the turret barbettes which are the the little c cylinders that go down um underneath the turrets there. They kind of connect the, the gun turret to the ship, right? That's where the little dudes would be and they're loading. That's where your powder magazine is. You want to try to hit those then because that will give you a little extra traction on your shell, you could say, to actually detonate because the shells do detonate. Um, in the game, they will go They will go through the ship and they will detonate in the water on the other side if you get an overpen and it won't do the damage. Um, an overpen only does 10% of its damage. That's not what you want. A citadel strike is 100% of its damage. Um, beyond that, you know, a ship is broken into four pieces. This is kind of an important thing to know. Because when you're setting fires, you can only set four fires to a ship. If you look at a ship like this, on its broadside, you cut it into fourths. It's back, it's middle, middle back, you know, front back, and then it's front. Those are each sections, and those sections hold so many hit points. And you can only put a fire in each one of those sections. So if you put a fire here on the back, it's time to start walking your shells up and get, you know, in the next section. And you start a fire there, and then the front section, and then the middle front. You know, light all those fires up. Don't sit there, and if you get a fire here on this big, you know, conning tower, don't sit there and keep hammering that one spot. You're going to do damage, but you're not going to get another fire. And fires are detrimental to a ship. You know, it makes you burn your damage cons, and then you get the permanent fires for, you know, up to a minute and a half, depending on how your commanders are set up. You know, and that can that can win the game. That can kill a ship for you. So walk your shells back or forward and get the get the fire in the next section. Okay. Also, that's how damage saturation works. 
each part of that ship, when it runs out of hit points, its paint will start to turn black, and you'll see holes in it. You could shoot that spot, you'll get, a, you'll get an overpen, and you won't hardly get any damage if you get damage at all. That's because there's no more hit points left there. You know, that's why Wilder Rebuild is such a broken perk on the battleships, because you just run out of hit points to take, and they can sit there and Wilder Rebuild back to 20% of their HP, and we'll go over that so you know what it means, and, um, and they can just stay alive like a zombie ship until they start to turn and give you a new part of their ship to shoot that hasn't exhausted all of its HP points. So there's that. And I know this is a lot of information. Might have to watch it once or twice. I'm trying not to overload you, but those are that's a basic part of this game. So that that covers ship, how it's built, its armor schemes, how shells react to armor. Um, we will cover what shell to use when. Um, generally speaking, if you have a battleship head-on, you know, to, if you're in a cruiser, switch to HE. Shoot it in that big old fucking... Look at that conning tower. That thing's huge. Shoot it in there. You're going to set some fires. You're going to do some damage. Its tub will eat your shells. It'll bounce. They'll shatter. Um, they won't bounce. They'll just shatter. Um, you know, if you're facing another cruiser, if you're a tier up and you're in a big cruiser like, you know, an American, you know, a Baltimore, you might actually be able to get some penetrations. Sometimes you got to feel it out. Um, shoot them in the tub. Shoot them down here in the in their bow and see if you get a pen. If it shows a ricochet or a shatter, switch to HE and start shooting them up top. There's a lot of just learning the game, right? Playing an AI, getting the feel for the ship, the shells. The first thing, when I get a new ship, a lot of the times, if I'm not familiar with it, I'll go into AI and I'll play a couple games and just get a feel for it. Look at its torpedoes, its guns, reload, how it turns, how it feels, how it, how it hits ships. You know, get a feel for it. There's no shame in that. That's good stuff. All right. So now the next thing we're going to look at is commanders. Um, these are the most important part of the game. They they make the ship, right? Some ships are naturally really good. Some are kind of broken. You take the Weimar, which was a tier 6 ship that they had to put in tier 7 because it was so good. And it is still very competitive. When you put a good commander on that and you put a good person piloting it, it turns into a little monster. Okay, so... You have all these different commanders, right? <clears throat> and each commander is specific to a ship type. So you take William Sims here, on the top right-hand corner of his card, you'll see there's a battleship symbol. That means that he's a battleship commander. All of his traits are specific to, or are mostly all spe spe specific to battleships, right? Norman Scott, he's a cruiser commander. You can see he's got the little cruiser symbol. That means that all his stuff is basically geared towards a cruiser. Here we have Arlie Burke. He's a destroyer captain, right? So all of his stuff is for destroyers. Now, when you start out, you get like George Dewey. See how he doesn't have his symbol is just a ship? He's a universal commander. So all of his his stuff is kind of back and forth. He has a little bit of everything. It's not necessarily good. As you can see, my George is very low level. He's a level 11 because I don't use him. You grow out of them once you get better commanders. But at the beginning, you're going to use them. So, you know, put a little bit of put a little bit of effort into them, but don't don't put a lot of resources because commander resources are some of the hardest to come by, especially if you don't spend money on the game. I spend money on the game. As you can see, I have 1,500 premium days. I buy crates. I buy doubloons. I buy ships. I buy stuff. It's stupid. You know, I don't recommend it. If you have a couple bucks and you want to buy a ship, do it, but don't go overboard, okay? So these guys, and as you can see, you can look and you can see, okay, torpedo speed. That's very generic. That means that it will work on any ship that has torpedoes, right? Chances of HE shell fire. It doesn't specify the ship. So right here you have destroyer gun traverse, cruiser and battleship gun traverse speed. Those break it down. That means that it will only do this for a destroyer and only do this for your cruiser and battleships. Um... When you go to a specific, like, let's go to William Sims. As you can see here, his stuff, battleship main battery, battleship main shell grouping. That's because he's a battleship guy. So all this stuff is for his your battleship, except for maybe emergency specialist, right? Or, um, you know, this one is also very generic. Here we have crisscross, which is a generic trait that you will see on a lot of commanders. So obviously... It kind of goes back and forth, but a lot of his his good traits, you know, like marksman, is battleship specific, and that's kind of how they work, right? 
He works as an inspiration on every ship. He will give you more hit, hit points. And as you'll see on the gunboat destroyers, we'll kind of break down some gun, some builds. Um, you run him because he makes your battleship, your uh, destroyer a little tougher, which when you're in a gunfight, having more hit points, it's kind of nice to have. Um, one thing I will say, when you get to the point where you have like a William Sims who is kind of a staple, now there's um, Azern Lane, New Jersey. She's kind of taken over as, you know, the staple U.S. Um, uh, U.S. Uh, battleship commander because she gives such a huge buff to the damage, about 25 to 50 percent, depending on what inspirations you're running. So she's kind of taking over, but William Sims is still, he's still really good. And if you don't have her, but you have him, you're going to be just fine because he is the dude, okay? Um, once you have him, the one th there's going to be a lot of people that are going to say run Reaching Out XXL. I don't recommend running Reaching Out XXL on any build unless there's just nothing on these two traits that work for you. And, and let's do the math on this. So a Yamato shoots 19.1 kilometers by itself, right? That's pretty far. 4% um, of 19.1 kilometers is like 0.76 kilometers. 0.76. That ain't nothing. Most of your engagements are going to be within 18 kilometers anyway. So who cares if you can shoot that far? 19.1 is plenty far to do everything you need to do. Um, when you could go to emergency specialist, right? And you're going to think, well, it gives me negative 70% on my damage party control party duration. Trust me, that doesn't matter. Um, the object here is to get the fire or the flood out 30% faster, right? Which is about 24 seconds faster. And that's a lot of hit points. When you're when you have like a double flood, when you have a flood or you got a fire, you know, you got a double fire on you, you hit your damage con because you, you don't damage con a single fire, you let it go. Um, you know, you get the double fire on you, you hit your damage con, and all of a sudden a torpedo comes out of nowhere, and now you have a stupid flood, right? Well, you know, if you're low on health or you're in wildery build range. If you're low on health, you might die anyway. It doesn't matter, right? But if you're in wildery build range and you can kind of just limp along, maybe pop a heel and, and try to stay alive, you know, that 24 seconds, that seems like a long time when you're dying, right? So that's um, that could be an important thing. And um, you can put those traits on there and you can actually see it. I've done the math several times and I've showed a lot of people, so I know I'm right on my times. And... Um, this is how the big boys run it, okay? I am I am not a 10,000 game player. I have 4,600 games. I have a 59% win rate. I'm above average, but I'm not great. Um, when you look at the good, a lot of the good players, this is how they kind of set up their sims, okay? They might throw on properly meticulous if they're brawling or doing something fun, but on average, this is how they're running their American battleships. So... I recommend Emergency Specialist on everything. I run a Wildery build, especially if you're in a division. As you can see, this is a 16-4 commander. And when I say 16-4, I mean his rank is 16 and his legendary perk is 4. That means he's maxed out. Um, we can go here. My Norman Scott is a 16 and 3. So the higher you get these, you can see how the little circles down here on the bottom, they get filled up. Those perks do more, right? So... Instead of, in the next one, he'll get 5% dispersion buff. Um, instead of, right now, he's at 4%, right? And I have these guy kind of set up a little funny for uh, some brawl stuff. Um, I use Azure Lane Baltimore a lot more. Um, commanders are the one thing I suggest. Ask your friends who play a lot, what's good? What are the good commanders? You know, if there's Azure Lane commanders out there, What's, what's the good ones? And they'll, they'll tell you, you know, buy this guy. You know, get Azure Lane Baltimore or New Jersey. They're staples. There's some new guys out there that are really good. Like right now, if you got the money um, and New Jersey's still in the store, may not be by the time you're watching this, pick her up if you can. 20,000 doubloons, it's a lot, and it's kind of stupid. But if you're going to play the game and you like the game, may not be a bad um, investment. So another thing when you're looking at commanders is what they do. Okay, I'm an accuracy guy. I build into accuracy for everything I do. Hey, what's up, Dirty Dan? Um, and um, you have the different type of commanders. As you can see, when you look at William William Sims' uh, traits, a lot of what he's doing is shell grouping and dispersion, right? So shell grouping, when it comes out of the out of the barrels, your shell grouping is how tightly they group. You know, are you getting like a big old wide pattern, 
or are you getting a nice tight you know laser beam where all the shells are like stacked on top of each other and they're just going to go destroy something right and then there's dispersion and dispersion is your up and down so when you shoot you know if you have a lot of up and down shells and they're kind of split afar you know and they're going above the ship and below the ship that's your high dispersion um, and then so if you have low dispersion and high shell grouping so as you can see his main battery dispersion negative 10 percent so he's bringing that dispersion down so the shells are staying in more of a a flat line and then your shell grouping um, which i believe would be this trait here five percent that means it's bringing it in to a tighter circle you know so now you're pinpointing your shells and you're hitting your target that's where you get your accuracy um, so and then my traits cunningham he brings that shell grouping he, he gets it better right so high shell grouping you want that good low dispersion and then main battery dispersion negative 3.6 percent with Sharnhorst, right so i want those shells in a nice tight ball you know it's like a shotgun choke right it's bringing it down so he's an accuracy commander and you're going to hear people talk about brawler commanders well here is an american brawler commander and you can see that because they ha normally have a trait called brawler right and as you can see your reload time gets buffed your torpedo detectability range and brawling is like getting up close and, and grabbing somebody by the nose and starting punching right so you want to be able to see torps you want the faster reload your gun range you don't care because you're going to be up close you don't care if you lose 10 percent and then you're going to have things like porcupine so your secondaries start doing more damage now every ship has secondaries for the most part destroyers don't really have them um, but some battleships have a lot some don't and they're just little guns on the side of your ship that automatically fire right so we'll, we'll show you what those kind of look like and where to find that but so here's your you know and then properly meticulous is another secondary trait a very famous secondary bill that you're gonna see is um you know uh holy crap where is he von hipper as you can see his elbow room base trait which is what would be like if he's an inspiration that's what you would get and then you know he's got some other stuff he's kind of a nice hybrid i run him on all my battleships because i can get my accuracy plus i can still boost their secondaries or i can throw on you know emergency specialist depending on how i'm feeling or if i'm running solo or in a div if i'm running in a div i'll run properly meticulous if i'm running solo i might throw on emergency specialist because i may not have old rebuild to help me get through the fire um, another dude that is very popular would be Ciliax, and where is he? Auto Ciliax. He's their brawler commander, as you can see. Um, I don't have him leveled up because I don't brawl. If I'm going to brawl, I'll run Von Hipper, and and that's what I use. Um, and with him on, my Bismarck still has like 9 kilometer secondaries, which is just fine. Hey, Krom, what's up, dude? <clears throat> I'm doing a little uh, video here that I'm going to post on my YouTube for some newer players to kind of get some basics of the game. Um, so that's kind of how commanders work, right? And um, there's so many of them. They do so many different things. You know, you get some special guys here um, that are from, you know, collaborations. You know, this is a basic gunboat kind of commander setup with observant rage, mortar, uh, perceptive which shows you the direction of the closest enemy ship and that's kind of a staple if you're running a gunboat build along with twist and track i prefer um i prefer perceptive because it gives me a little bit of a damage um nerf on incoming damage um but also twist and track's good because your turrets are faster so it depends on the ship you're in if i'm in a german that might be the better americans have pretty fast turrets so eh. and then sheltered arms i don't like my guns getting blown up you know or my torpedo launchers, and that takes care of that. Um, unstoppable on the Leviathan, I run unstoppable because engines get broken a lot in destroyers. So being able to get that engine repair a little bit quicker and a little bit faster, plus your damage control cooldown is 50% better. That's huge. Um, that's nice. If you're close to an enemy, you know, and they break your engines, you got to get away from them. You get that 50% um, buff if you're six kilometers away. So that's awesome. And this is a pretty basic, this is how I kind of run my Mord off if on a, for just a standard match. If we're doing an arena, I'll put Sims on him. I'll take Swirsky off and give him more, uh, give my destroyers more HP. But on, in standard, this seems to be just fine because I'm, you know, normally have teammates helping me kill destroyers. 
So I'll run Bay and Swirsky because their detectability uh, brings my detectability down so I can still be kind of stealthy. And then I build into my, my guns, uh, C detectability. I don't run mortar, mortar unless I'm in, you know, an arena match or something like that kind of that kind of match where I just want my guns to absolutely hammer. Um, and then perceptive sheltered arms. And that's pretty standard, you know. Eric Bay is another kind of gunfighter. And as you can see, because his base trait is already detectability, I have Sims on here. And then I kind of set things up the same. As you can see, he has a perk here for your sonar. And um, that's because a lot of German destroyers have sonar. And we'll kind of go over what the cool thing is about that. So there's kind of your basic, you know, you have lots of different commanders. You can see I got a lot of like collab commanders. You know, starting out, you're going to have just kind of the basic guys. They're going to drop in crates, and that's how you get them. To get them leveled up, you know, you need you need resources. You need um, personal accommodations, and you get those when you get, like, in a commander crate or a crate. Um... <laughs> Dan's lurking in his underwear. Um, you, you get those when you open up a crate, right? And you get the same commander that you already have. And they duplicate it, and you get the gold personal commendation. You get enough of those. Like you can see here, I need 15 commendations to get him to four, and that's how you get them. Now, if you have, like I have a, a Sims who's maxed out, right? So I can go to the store. I can go to commanders. I can find William Sims, and I don't have the resources to do it, or I would. Um, so my available commander XP is only 267, 736, uh, 267,736. If I had 900,000 of it, which is actually not that hard to get, you just play, um, I could buy him. And since he's maxed out, it will give me a universal commendation. And a universal commendation can be used on any captain. And those are the blue ones um, that we saw. Um, let me get to just, I just need to find a spot. Yeah, so my bottom right hand corner available resources, I have two personal commendations. Those can only be used on Gleaves. And I have zero of my blue ones because I just, a couple weeks ago, I leveled up a bunch of commanders. Um, so I don't have any. But those could be used on him. They could be used on anybody. Um, so kind of save those and you kind of goof around and you figure out who your favorites are. You can tell who my favorites are because they're sitting at either 16-4 or 16-3, you know? Um, 16-2 is pretty average, but really you can run a commander at 15-2 or 15-3, and he's basically as good as a 16. Um, just, just an FYI. The perks there are very nil as far as how much they do. As you can see, you get a little bit more for your smoke. You get another 2%. Um, but, you know, on smoke, it's not a huge deal. So it depends on the commander, the perk, what you want to see, you know? Okay, so there's kind of a commander breakdown. Um, you know, all these commanders are a lot of the same stuff. As you can see, this is Cunningham. He's the accuracy commander for the British. His base trait is different from Sims, but everything else is exactly the same. And they actually have a name for these setups. Um, I don't remember it. Um, but so the... the the base trait, which is here, this is what, when you put them as an inspiration, this is what takes over, right, for your inspirations over here. Um, that's what's different, but all these little perks, they're going to be the, basically the same. So here's your, you know, accuracy commander. Charles Madden's a brawler. As you can see, he's got his brawler, porcupine, firefighter, properly meticulous, uh, wildery build, running with scissors, fi fire with fire. And if you're not sure, I'm not going to go through all these, what they do, but if you're not sure, you just stop and you read. Oh, okay, this gives me battle sh battleship gun traverse speed. Okay, that's cool. You know, rudder shift time. Oh, that's good. Main battery dispersion. Oh, it's a shotgun. All right, okay. Uh, yeah. You know, but I get this battleship AP shell damage plus 15% on everything. You know, that's, that's pretty good. Um, you know, fight fire with fire. You know, if you get three fires on it, it automatically puts it out. You don't need to use your damage con. So just read them. Figure out if that's what you want. Will to rebuild this kind of champion. It gets used a lot. Okay, so there's your kind of your commander breakdown, right? Um, so how do you know what kind of commander you want to put on your ship? Well, kind of depends on you. What play style do you want? What ships are you into? Americans are generally snipers. 
there's one ship that is a very good brawler, and it's the Massachusetts. Um, it has very good secondaries. It's got the armor. This um, these this is a South Dakota class battleship, and so is the Alabama, its sister. She's the sniper of the two. It has the some of the best alpha damage in the game, um, and it's it's pinpoint accurate. It's very accurate. It's awesome. Um, the Massachusetts is still very accurate. More of a mid rangey ship, um, but it likes to get up close and personal. And these South Dakota class battleships, they turn really well. You can really spin them around for a big ship, right? Um, so this is your American. If you want to go brawl, you can see all the little guns here on the side underneath the superstructure. Those are your secondaries. Um, and you can see, if you go to your stats and go to artillery, your secondary armament on the right side, you know, you have 10, 10 by 2, so that's 20, 127 millimeter guns that reach out to 7 kilometers. They have a 6 second reload time. Um, your HE, their HE shells, they're doing 18% or 1800 damage and there's a 5% chance of fires, right? So that's why. And you can throw a brawler build on there and you can make that a little bit better. And um, Justinian Leons is a very good um, because some of his perks, and we won't go into that because that's just that's too much information, right? But um, the Germans are famous. You take the Bismarck, the Brandenburg, they're famous for having these super good um, secondaries. As you can see, there's 16 secondaries there, and there's 12 there, so that's, uh, that's what, 30 total secondaries, 16 and 12? No, that's uh, 28, excuse me. Um, total secondaries, 105 millimeter and 150 millimeter. Um, with 9 kilometer range, 2.4 second reload, so they're just fast, right? They're going off, they're going bang. Um, it's like sparklers going off. I will say that they're not super accurate. The Massachusetts has very accurate shells uh, for secondaries. Massachusetts, or the Bismarck is not so much. None of the Germans are. I would say the Massachusetts has the most accurate of the secondaries. Um, they don't cause the fires, and there's not as many of them, but they hit their target. Um, you s a lot of guys will say... You know, secondaries are good for killing destroyers. They're good for killing destroyers that are basically almost already dead. They do not work well at killing destroyers that have full health and if they're piloted by a guy who knows what he's doing. Um, I have killed a lot of Bismarcks in my destroyers because they built into their secondaries and they didn't build into their main battery and they couldn't hit me with their big guns. This ship has 15-inch guns. It'll wreck you if you, have, you, know, if you get hit. Um, but I've, I've torped them at close range because their secondaries weren't doing enough damage. They couldn't hit me with their main battery. So it's not always a good idea. It is freaking fun, though. Sometimes it's fun to to, loin, to, um, to, to line up, <laughs> to div up with some buddies, throw a whole bunch of uh, secondary buffs on there, and just go meme some people. You know, run will to rebuild in a, in a trio of Brandenburg and Bismarck and just bully people. That can be a lot of fun. It's not always effective, and it won't always win you the game, but when you're just wanting some entertainment, it is good time, okay? So I'm not saying don't ever do it, but... Um, and it might be your play style. You know, if you're a brawler, that's your thing. It's not me. I like to have some range. I like to hit stuff with my guns. Um, you know, even you take the Odin, which is kind of a brawler. It's got small guns and torpedoes. It's still running an accuracy build because I want to hit stuff, and it's still got a fast reload, so... Those are the things to think about, and you will learn this as you play. You will figure out what you like. You'll figure out if you're a battleship guy, or if you're a cruiser guy, or if you're a destroyer dude, you know? Like, what do you want to do? Do you want to sneak around, get caps, torpedo, sneak up on people and use your little guns that reload fairly fast? Um, do you want to sit back and kind of shoot people from a distance and set them on fire, and then when they get too close, punish them with torpedoes, or go hunt destroyers down and, and make them hate their life? Or do you want to just tank a bunch of damage and do a bunch of damage and, um, you know, roll into people and bully them, you know, run into destroyers and kill them and, and not have and not die? You know, you'll figure that stuff out as you play. Or do you want to, you know, harass destroyers in your carrier? You know, you can do that, too. That's that's a fun thing. You know, keeps fire spammers from sitting back and and hiding, you know, be the guy who can be anywhere at once. So you'll learn this as you play. Right, so there's, we went over kind of commanders, ships, and how they're put together. Um, so let's go over kind of the ships themselves, right? So the American line is considered probably one of the easiest to learn overall. 
the ships are fairly balanced all together and you have lots of different things to play with. The destroyers are more gunboat oriented. They have fairly fast reloads. They do good damage. They have torpedoes, but they kind of reload a little slower, um, like a minute and a half reload, you could say, for a torpedo, you know, on average. Um, but there are very few destroyers that can take on any of their counterparts of the American line and actually win in a head-up gunboat battle. There are a few that do it and, and do it really well. You mostly have to go over here to the Pan-Europe guys, to the Ostergotland, the Scone, the Vostris, the Visby. These guys, they can gun. They can get with it. Um, the Friesland, which is a premium ship, is the king of the gunboats at Tier 7. Um, it can... the Fletcher can hang, and if you have a better commander and you're in a better, you're a better captain, you can beat a Friesland in a fight. But the Friesland on paper is better, so just something to be aware of. You know, you can't really walk all over everybody. Some of these Japanese ships, you got to be careful around. If you walk into an Akazuki and you're not paying attention, and you have low health, and he's got more health than you, he will beat you up. He has good guns. They reload fast. They hit hard. Even some of these torp boats, you take the Kagero and the Akatsuki. Um, I have no problem if an American gunboat comes rolling around the corner and he's half health and I'm full health. I have no problem opening up my guns on him. I will win that fight. They hit hard. They do reload slow and they don't traverse fast. So kind of get prepared, get your guns in, get, get him lined up. And you're going to see him a long time before he sees you because the detectability is so much lower on these torp boats, you know. Maybe throw some torps his way. On the Akatsuki, it's famous for this. It's one of my favorite ships. You'll break his engines in the in the first, second, or third volley. So if you throw torpedoes and then you start shooting, the chances are you'll break his engines. And then a lot of players, they get a little flustered, you know, if they're not experienced. They might hit not hit their damage con, or it'll slow them up just enough, <clears throat> excuse me, that they can't dodge your torps. And if you catch one of these torpedoes from any of these destroyers, you're probably going to die. Because they absolutely smack, okay? Um, these have torpedoes as well. They're not as good. They're, you know, these are kind of just their different line. The Akizuki is very much the gunboat of the group. Um, these also have decent guns. Um, you know, I've I've gotten to fights with Minkazis and Hatsuharos, and they're good. They have good guns. If you have the right build, good commanders, um, and you know what you're doing, you can hold your own for the most part. Now, that being said, you know, and I don't think an Akizuki and a Fletcher, both full health. I don't think it would beat it. I know it wouldn't beat a Friesland. I still think, you know, Fletcher, Friesland, Ostergotland, they're still kind of the kings, you know, but it would be close. You know, if you're low on health, you're going to be you're gonna be hurting. So Americans have these nice balance ships. Um, they're cruisers after tier five. They, they don't have torpedoes. What they do have is stupid good guns. This, and America has the two different lines of cruiser. These are the heavy cruisers, so they have the bigger guns and slower reload, five to eight inch guns. Um, and then they have these light cruisers, which are the smaller guns that are shooting a lot faster. And these are the guys that are gonna sit back behind islands and light you on fire over and over and over again and make you hate your life. And then you have the different classes of battleship. And these are kind of funky. I think the Carolina should have been here where the Colorado is because it is a fast, faster battleship and kind of leads into the Iowa. But these came in later in the game, right? So um, American battleships are, are very easy. You just don't give broadside. You got to stay angled or nose in like we talked about and let their bow armor do its job. Their guns hit very hard. You know, a lot of them have 16 inch guns at a very low level. Um, I believe that New Mexico I might have, hmm, I don't remember. I know the Colorado has 16s, North Carolina has 16s, everything up has 16s. Um, these are all have the same type of gun. So, you know, you get good firepower. They're kind of slow. The North Carolina is not too fast, or is not too slow. It's fairly fast. The Iowa's quick. The Maine isn't too shabby, but the Kansas, Colorado, and all these boys, they're slow. They take their sweet merry time getting places. So you have to be very aware of your mini map and where you're going and what you're doing to make sure that you can really help out your team. So a lot of the nations are basically set up, they all have their own little niche, right? Um, as you can see, they just the Japanese have one line of cruiser. They're kind of a mid-rangey, light, light to heavy. Aoba's kind of a more heavy cruiser. Mayoko's kind of a little bit lighter, um, still packs a punch. 
Um, and then you got the one line of uh, the Japanese battleships. As you can see, I don't have all my tech tree ships. I have about 40 I still need to unlock. The British, they kind of have a light and a heavy. Um, the British are weird. The Emerald, Leander, and Fiji, and Edinburgh. And I'm pretty sure the Neptune, they only shoot AP shells. They don't have HE. These guys have HE, and um, they have pretty good, pretty good shells. I'm not a huge fan of them. They just don't fit my play style. But they aren't bad. If you like them, you like them. Their destroyers are fun. They can shoot single torpedoes instead of a big fan. So that's really great. Their guns aren't too bad. They have short smokes, but you get lots of them that recharge fast. So it's just kind of a different play style. So you got to play them all, and you kind of figure out what you like, right? I know guys that just play, they like the English ships. English ships inherently have good HE rounds. Their AP is what's called shoot, short fuse AP. So their AP actually works really good on cruisers. You won't overpen because the AP will actually go off. Um, unlike like an American or German where you're going to get some pass-throughs, the, the fuses on their AP is shorter. So it makes contact and it's less time between contact and detonation than a standard AP shell. Um, there are a few that have regular, the Warspite and I think the Nelson have regular AP rounds. Um, so they just they hit like, like a German kind of wood. Um, but these guys, they have good HE, short fuse AP. Now, carriers are kind of a different breed, and I'm not a huge carrier expert. I've played like 50, 60 games in carriers. I know how to play them. It's just not for me. I don't I don't enjoy it. Um, each nation has their own characteristics, whether they have you know fast planes, heavily armored planes, um, the damage they do, what bombs they drop, the amount of torpedoes, if they have skip bombs, the English carpet bomb, um, their torpedoes drop differently. So for that... Get in a carrier, play some AI batches, and kind of learn the lay of the land. I will tell you that if you're playing a carrier, the number one thing you should do when you get into a match, and any you know, is find your destroyers. Um, find the enemy destroyers. Circle them. If you're good enough to bomb them and kill them, do it. If not, just circle them and try to get your team to start shooting at them. The team who has the destroyers by the end of the match normally wins. If you can kill all their destroyers in the first five minutes and yours are still alive you have a really good chance of winning the match because they can sneak around, they can they can torp the battleships, they can get the caps, they can do all the things that you need them to do, and once the destroyers are dead, then you can go screw around. You can go find a, you know, if there's a, a, a light cruiser that's sitting behind an island spamming HE, well, he's a stationary target. Go put some torps in his side, make him move, make him get out so that your battleships can go, oh, there you are. There's that guy who's been lighting me on fire all damn day. Here, hold these 15 or 16 inch shells. Enjoy, you know, help your team out. It's a team game and the carrier is very crucial to the team. You have to be a team player. Pay attention to your mini map, see what's going on. Keep your carrier moving and flowing with the team. So, you know, don't go put it in the back of the map. And so it takes five minutes for your planes to get there. Keep it kind of forward, but you have to pay attention. And that stuff takes practice. This is not an easy ship to learn. Hitting your targets is hard, okay? Um, Germans are very versatile, right? You have um, different types of battleships, kind of your lighter. They, these guys are going to have torpedoes, and um, some of them have torpedoes. Um, they get, like the Gneisen now, the Heinrich, the Zeiten. They have sonars. They have good armor. They have good guns. Um, figure out which ones you like. I love German cruisers. I find them to be the absolute most versatile in the game. The Americans are very good. They're AP smacks, but these German ships are quick their guns are fairly fast their ap hits hard their he works well they have torpedoes they have sonar they have all these tools that you can use to win matches and do a lot their um, destroyers are the same way they have sonar they have good torpedoes they have good guns they can fend for themselves they don't need a lot of help they're good the german line is very versatile the Parsifal is one of the best crew, uh, carriers in the game. It's been nerfed because it's so dominant. Its AP bombs just crush. Um, it's a lot of fun to play. Um, I've got a solo wire and a Parsifal, and like I said, I've got 56 carrier games. So I, kill, I, I, I won a match against five people by myself, and I had to work for it, but I did it. That's how good this thing is, right? You put this in the hands of a really good carrier player, it's hell for everybody. The French. The French are kind of funny, right? Their, um, <laughs> their battleships are hated by a lot, loved by some, and I like them. They're quick, 
Um, their guns hit hard. French AP is and French armor is magic. I don't know. It's they're fun. Okay, try them out. The cruisers are also kind of you have to get a taste for them. Cruisers the hardest class to play though. So it's kind of if you're a cruiser player, you're gonna find your niche. Um, and if you do it well, good for you, man. You're you're working. You gotta pay attention, especially if you're doing it well. Their um, their destroyers normally don't have any smoke. They're fast. Um, like the La Fantasque is one of the, or the, uh, is it the La Terrible or the La Fantasque? One of them. It's like the fastest ship in the game. It can go like 55 knots. They, they're just, they're fast. Um, they have pretty good guns. They got fun torpedoes. Um, they just don't have smoke. So you got to really pay attention. Sometimes they have sonar, depending on the ship. Um, they're also, they have their little niche. Some people love them. Some people don't. You'll find your use for them. Okay. The more you play, you kind of find the ships you like. Uh, the Russians, you have, these are their heavy, their big boys, and these are their lights here. Um, the Talon is a monster. It's AP, just it wrecks other cruisers at all sorts of weird angles. It's really weird. Their destroyers, um, I don't play a lot of the Russian stuff, as you can see. Their destroyers aren't bad. The Kiev is actually pretty good. Um, you know, if you like them, you play them well. You know, they work for you. Um, I need to get into them and, and kind of just grind it out, obviously, because I want to get all the ships unlocked, but... Um, it's the same, you know, the Russians just don't fit me. I, you know, I've had good games in the sign-up. I do not like the Ishmael. Um, it's, it's shooting angles on its, you have to turn so broadside to get all your guns to shoot. Um, cause it's only got one turret in the front. It, it's, it's painful and it gets citadel so easy cause it's armor so thick. So shells actually detonate and it's, it's tough. The Vlad isn't too bad. It's got kind of a funky nose on it that gets kind of beat on if you know where to shoot. So, uh, again, Acquired taste, play them, learn them. If you love them, you do. If you don't, well, play them anyway. <laughs> Their carriers, the, the the tier three carriers, they pretty much all suck, right? Tier five and tier seven is kind of where they come into their own. But these are good carriers, right? They're a destroyer's worst nightmare. These they have skip bombs, and these skip bombs can absolutely just crush destroyers. The Serov, I don't know how many times I've been in a destroyer and just been harassed to death by a Seraph. You can actually kill destroyers by yourself with their skip bombs. You don't need any help, which is a, a big problem, you know. You throw all your torpedoes at once, um, all your skip bombs at once, and they actually skip across the water. And so if you time it right, and you kind of feel it out, you time it right, you hit a destroyer, it just, it, it fucks them up. It's bad, dude. Pobi the same way. Um, they're, good they're, they're good carriers. Italians, these guys are cool. They're fast. Um, as in real life, their, their their cruisers were super fast. They shoot SAP or AP rounds. You can also put HE or AP. So you can switch your HE out for SAP, which is semi-armor piercing. Those are the red shells you see. A lot of the secondaries, all the secondaries on these guys are SAP rounds. And SAP rounds are devastating to a destroyer. They hurt way more than HE. You don't set fires with them, but you do more damage um, because they're semi-armor piercing. Um... And when you hit a uh, battleship with them in the superstructure, instead of chunking them for a couple hundred, you're hitting them for like, you know, 800 to 1,000. You're not getting your fires, but you're just, you're taking more damage. Um, the battleships are fun. They're really well-rounded. They're fairly tough. Their secondary armaments are fun. Their guns work well. You know, I like, I, I've been grinding these guys. Um, I just kind of got into them again. I have some premium Italians that I love. Um, they're not bad ships. Um, obviously, this line is growing. They've just kind of started adding. The battleships are pretty new to the game. Uh, Pan-Europeans, these guys are pretty new as well. Um, they have fast guns. Their torpedoes don't do a lot of damage, but they reload fast, so you're going qu uh, quantity over quality. Um, you know, Oster Gotland has really fast guns, um, no smoke. Uh, so you got to kind of, you know, there's no smoke thing. You got to work with that. You got to pick your fights, know when to push and pull. Um, the Pan-Asian, as you see, there's the new cruiser line coming in. And they're kind of different. These guys have what's called deep water torpedoes. And you can see, I'll play it and you can kind of see the difference. Deep water torpedoes don't hit destroyers. Um, and their, their symbol when they go through the water, instead of being a triangle, like a normal torpedo, is a... Um, like a teardrop, right? So if you get teardrop torpedoes coming at you and you're sitting in your smoke, which I don't recommend it as a destroyer unless it's just kind of your thing, 
Um, they'll just go right underneath you, but they, they hurt cruisers and battleships. They cause more floods. They do lots of damage. Um, and, uh, yeah, they're not, they're not bad. They're kind of more gunboaty with torpedo. They're kind of that mid range, um, with help. They can, they can take out other destroyers, um, that aren't necessarily straight up gunboats. You know, if they have the help, you know, engage, get after it. And you'll learn that as you play them. And that's the thing. A lot of this is playing it learning it, seeing what you're comfortable with. Um, all I'm going to do here, I'm just trying to teach you like how to make it that far and be successful and not hate the stupid game. Another thing you should do every day, go to the store, go to offers, get your free daily crate. I almost forgot. That's, um, that's an important thing. It'll have some boosters in it, some camos maybe, kind of depends kind of a random deal see here we go I got I got a paint I got some silver and I got some global XP nothing crazy but hey you know paints always useful right so there's your ships there's your commanders the bureau I know a lot of people don't know about the bureau um, this gives you your legendary ships you go in here you start up a bureau project and you assign your commanders and some ships. Beginning, you won't really have any. Your beginning bureaus will be really easy to do. They'll give you a couple ones that are just freebies, right? You'll get like a St. Louis, I think, or something like that. Um, and then you do your daily trials, which is you play a Baltimore, you win a battle in a Baltimore. And it changes, it changes on every bureau. So it'll have these things. You just win it in whatever it says. And um, you get extra points. And as you can see, I'm getting close to my rooster. And uh, my Colbert, and I got a few left to do. Um, yeah, introduction to the Bureau, you get the Campbelltown, which is kind of a fun little boat. And then my first one was Yamato, Alaska. I got the Grober. I did a red, white, and blue, which gave me my California. This one's not available anymore, I don't believe. And then I just, you know, just kind of went through and, and got some other stuff. So there you go. We've went through ships, um, the different nations, and kind of their utility. Uh, how ships work, how their armor works, how you can calculate if you're really into it. Um, learning shell types and, you know, learning which guns have which. Um, commanders, what they do, how to set them up for the most part. Um, you know, the campaign, you know, if you want to buy into it, go for it. I recommend it. Get that campaign ship. It's a, it's a tier 8 for $15 and then just a little bit of time by doing your assignments. Um, bureau the store you'll figure that out on your own so let's uh let's now let's go into game mechanics itself i'm gonna play a couple in ai because it's easier that way to talk and kind of show some stuff actually uh, it's not really because the ai so ai plays very differently than a person right they just kind of rush in on you and you can get away with an awful lot in ai you can push in and just start killing things um so let's play in standard and we'll just play kind of a I'll play some lower tier stuff so that I don't have to work as hard at staying alive. Take the Clemson, which is one of my favorite ships. This is a great boat at tier 3. It's a little overpowered. It's a gunboat with good torps that reload pretty fast. And you have lots of them. Alright. So this is the meat and potatoes now, huh? Now we're learning stuff. So the first thing you do when you come into a match and you're waiting for the countdown, I have a Series X, so my countdown is very, you know, I can get into the match really early. First thing you do is pull up this menu. See who you're playing against. Okay, so it's a straight up tier three with tier fours mixed in. Good to remember. A couple of Omahas. Um, the battleships, they don't really worry me. I'm in a destroyer. There is carriers, the Langley. So I have a V-170, which is more of a gunboat. Uh, a Wakeful, which is uh, British. I can take him in a gunfight. The Barants, I can pretty much take all of them in a gunfight. Um, for one, my ship is a little bit better, and I feel I have the confidence that I'm going to be better than them overall. Could be very wrong. Shit happens. So from there, now on a map like this, when you have two points stacked up, this is priority in my mind. You want to hold those two points. They're easy to defend. They're fairly easy to take. And you can kind of see where the team is here. Um, Pay attention to your minimap. That thing on the top left-hand corner, that is probably your biggest asset in the game. Um, I look up at it, probably not enough, but every few 
you know, every 10 seconds I'm looking up, I'm seeing what's being, especially when I'm in the battle, you know, I'll drive my destroyer, I'll be looking behind me, and I'll be driving my destroyer through islands trying to use that. Now, you will run into islands using it because it's, you know, a mini-map and you can't see that greatly, but it helps, okay? Um, another valuable resource is point your turrets where you want them, and you do this in every ship, and then use your left bumper, and now you can look around and your turrets won't move. That is super nifty. And this is how you, you know, dodge torpedoes. It's backwards, so you kind of have to get used to that. But, um, because I was looking backwards, right? Um, but using this as a resource, very good. Helps you dodge things. Helps you kind of see, like, oh, what are they doing over there? Helps you ping stuff. You know, things like that. Okay, so now looking at my mini-map, I know there's a carrier back there harassing them. Which is good. Stay away from me. We're capping Bravo. Two of my destroyers are over there. I have a battleship, a couple battleships, a cruiser over here. Um, as you can see, my my, uh, my twist and track is telling me where my nearest enemy is. Um, there's a cruiser. So I don't want to go diving in here because he has cruiser and battleship support, and I don't. See, my whole team went to Bravo, and I don't know why, but they did. And they're going to cap it, and maybe they'll come back, and that'll be fine. But I'm kind of hung out to dry here, so I'm not going to go diving into this. I'm, I'm going to kind of play, I'm going to play coy. You know, I'm going to kind of hang back. I'm going to wait for somebody to do something stupid, right? And Dirty and Dan and I had a really good talk about this last night, is you have to know when to push and make something happen, when to hold back. You know, sometimes pushing, you know, you're, you're losing anyway. Sometimes pushing, you might die, but you're going to lose the match anyway. You might as well die with your boots on, right? Go out fighting. And sometimes you can do that, and you can make some things happen that turn the tide. You know, if you can get in there and you might kill a destroyer or something, maybe that's all your team needed. Now, you know, now you're going. So you, you got to really learn the ebb and flow of the battle, especially destroyer. Destroyer is very much give and take. Don't get greedy. I'm going to let him come to me. Why Why go diving in there when he's got an Omaha behind him, right? And there's another battleship backing him up. Only I can only, I only have 10,000 hit points, or 11,000. Right? It's not going to take much to kill me. So I'm going to kind of just let them come in. Agricourt, you want to keep coming in? You're in my torpedo range. See, I'll, I'll throw some torps out there. And that's all I'm doing now. I'm just kind of I'm pushing on them. Like, just just hold up. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm wind on them, right? I'm just I'm holding them up, keeping them from really crutching in there. They're going to see my torpedoes and learn that, oh, there's a destroyer in here. That'll slow them a little bit. Make them think about it. Don't just give shit to them. So now we're just kind of cruising. Carrier's over here, helping out a little bit. Cool, cool. So the carrier's here. I could smoke up and start HE spamming if I wanted to. But I'm going to save my smoke right now. The game's early. We're winning on points. Don't need to be a hero. There's a destroyer. All right. So now is the time that we hit this. We're going to smoke up. And my, my carrier's not going to last a long time because there's some good HE there. But... We have a little bit of time here, and I'm shooting HE like or AP like an idiot. So you can see I got three bounces and a penetration on my ribbons there. So I'm going to switch to HE. Now he's firing torpedoes. He's got torpedoes on his sides and in his front. So I just crushed his engines. He's got a damage con that. He's letting it go. My carrier, since he's there, is actually going to spot those torpedoes for me. So I'm going to keep moving here, get out of this little, little spot. Um, actually, I can keep just backing up. I can keep backing up here. Yeah, there we go. Now what I want to do is I want to stay in my smoke. I'm going to tap my left. I'm going to push down on my left uh, stick, and I'm going to get my torpedoes. I'm going to select the agricourt. I'm going to get some torpedoes going at him. Now he can't see me until he hits two kilometers. That's your guaranteed range of acquisition. So I know I have plenty of time here to hide. I need to get away. Be cool if those killed him. They did, so now I can open up without risk of him seeing my guns. Step on the brakes, and now we're going to shoot this V-170. He's probably going to shoot more torpedoes. The Tier 3 destroyers typically have a very quick reload, so I want to face my butt at him so that I can kind of get away. So now we have an Omaha. He's sitting broadside. No, he's going away a little bit. There's some torps there. Those are from that V-170. Told you they were coming. So we're going to switch back to HE. Now, if he gives me broadside, I will switch to AP and I will penetrate him because he's got such thick armor and these American guns work that good. 
and that's true of all the tiers on all the cruisers. If you're up close and personal, you can you can shred and get citadels on cruisers. Um, don't be afraid to push them sometimes. If they're low health and by themselves, you're in uh, an American destroyer with a fast reload. You can kind of go around the island and get up in their face. Do it. Get broadside with them. Trade some shots. Um, especially late game. Oh, that's beautiful there. That's so beautiful. Okay. So now look at that. This team's just getting worked, right? Um, they pushed me too hard. They didn't respect the fact that I have that I was that I was here. Um, the carrier came in and lit up the V-170, which was really see how nice that worked. We were able to get some shots. Screw with him. That's what you want to do. You want to make that stuff happen. So I'm gonna go in here. I'm gonna cap A. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna track this battleship down. Um, destroyers are gone. Um, we're winning the game. I'm just sailing for me right now, right? I'm, this is sailing simulator with a twist. I'm gonna hit my engine boost. Get up in here. Um, he knows I'm coming for him. I don't care. So chances are he is going to keep kind of going out this way. That's what I would do to get away from me. So what I will do is I will come and I will kind of work my way here and try to cut him off. There is another destroyer. He's the last ship left. So the chances are he's going to die before I can even get to him. But that's the stuff you need to think about. Like, what, okay, what's, my, what's he going to do? What am I going to do? It's a chess match. Okay. So we'll work our way through here. So I'm going to play a DD game, and then I'll play a cruiser game, a battleship game, and I'll probably play a CV game so you can see how bad I am at that and just kind of get an idea of what that looks like. Um, I haven't quite capped yet. i got 16 seconds. I want to get the cap. I want the XP. Um, getting caps is your number one way of getting XP. It's caps and medals. Medals are like dev strikes, confederates, things like that, um, the little round badges you'll get. Um, Getting caps gives you more XP than damage and kills. You get all of that in combination, though, and you get lots of XP. So just overall, though, that's it shows that you're being a team player. You're playing the objective, right? And that's what wins the match. So, yeah, he came out, and now he's going out and away because he sees all the torpedoes coming at him. So he was just trying to get away. He's running into our teammates over here. He has nowhere to go. The game's over. He knows it. He's just trying to, you know, get what he can in. So, um... I'm going to start just shooting at him just to get some damage, just to harass him. Um, he he won't shoot his guns. Obviously, the game's over anyway. I wasn't paying attention to the clock. That's also something. Look at the clock. It's something I don't do enough. Your points and your clock. You know, if you got the points and there's not a lot of time left, don't be a hero. Don't win hard. Sit back. Let the enemy hang themselves. And let them come into your torps. Don't, don't go chasing after them. So we had a decent game there. The V-170 and I kind of, we took the top. Um, he probably got that first cap right off the bat. He had a nice dev strike there on that Omaha. Um, so, yeah, we had a nice little game. I didn't do a lot there. As you can see, I only did 30, uh, 38,000 in damage, two kills with four torp hits with a capture, and my base XP was 1,500, and I took second on the team. That's not too shabby, really, for a Tier 3 game. I made 106,000 um, coins. My ship service, uh, all your ships have a service cost, and it goes up the higher you get, right? So I had to pay almost 10,000 coins for that game, and it does fluctuate for the amount of shots you take and whatnot um, and the torpedoes you, th you throw. So just be aware of that. It does cost. When you play Legendary, most of the time, unless you have a monster game, you're going to lose money. Um, sevens are very profitable. They gave them a buff on their profit, so you know that's kind of where your money-making is now. But winning gives you the buff, um, doing well, getting your caps, that kind of stuff. All right, so let's play a cruiser now. I'm not a great cruiser player. I don't play him a lot. Um, we'll play Konisberg. Oh, man, I don't know. Do I want to play Konisberg, though? Oof. Oof. Uh, I want to play something that's kind of well-rounded. All right, I might get dev struck. All right. It'll be funny. You guys can laugh at me. So as you can see, I got Augustine Riggerwald, who is just a monster of a commander. He's a... Um, Oh, I can't remember the collab for that. Uh, but he's good. Um, he's got Kraken. His special ability is Kraken Shells. Um, the multi uh, penetration multiplier on your AP just means that when the RNG rolls the dice, your random number generator, it stacks the odds in your favor a little bit by 10%. So you actually might get that pen, and that's, that's big. That's when you're going to get those citadels, right? And then obviously punch through. I want my AP damage juiced in that pen multiplier even more. And then his merciless traits 
reload time, AP shell damage. So my AP shells are just are good, right? So um, I'm running a Kona Spur, which is lightly armored and kind of a kiter. Um, so we're going to put Steer Clear on. And I'm going to take Mimbelli off. And I'm going to put Agilene Baltimore because I want Rudder Shift. Um, and so that's so I can kind of wiggle and wag. You can see this goofy turret set up. So with this ship, you kind of... And you have to look at your turret setups and sometimes and, and feel them out. You're going to wiggle. When you're sit, sitting there and you're angling at someone, you'll angle, you'll wiggle your butt into your ship and get your guns out, shoot straight back up so that they don't get any broadside or good angles on you, right? Um, and you just feel that out as you play. Again, a cruiser is, is very difficult to play well. Um, they're super influential in the game. A good cruiser player and a good cruiser that's set up right can make or break you. They really can. Um, if they're on your team, they can make you. If they're <laughs> if they're not on your team, they can break you. Um, if they know what they're doing, if they're fire spamming, controlling an area, killing destroyers, they're influential to the game. They have a lot of influence, but they get killed easy, right? They got light armor. These uh, big bad battleships smack them around a lot. So this is a, a decent kind of uh, learned four and fives. Um, one thing I would recommend you never do is what these guys did. Don't pair two different tiered ships together. Run the same tier. These guys are actually very lucky they didn't get put in with tier sixes. And the power jump between a tier four and a six is huge. It would not be any fun for that Congo. The cruisers would be able to just punish him because um, he's so much older. The ship is so much older. The armor isn't as good. Just so much. The battleships would have their way with them. You're going up against the big 16s, the Colorados. You know, the new uh, the North Carolinas. Oh, man, just so much penetration there. Don't do that. Run a 5 and a 5 or a 4 and a 4. You won't. You might get them put with 5s or 3s, but you won't get put in with 6s. This is called a fail div. Okay, so the first thing we're going to look at, we got a, Vast, a Vostris a Gade. He's got sonar. i got to keep an eye on that. Uh, we're going to cover that, too. Don't worry. Chunking. All right. Queen Elizabeth. She's got big guns, 181 millimeter, short fuse AP, but at this tier... They're big enough that they, they'll hurt me real bad. So I gotta be very mindful of that, and I gotta be very careful. So you can see my uh, my rudder shift is fairly quick. See, it kind of gets maxed out there fairly fast. So that's gonna help me kind of avoid these when I get up to speed and start kiting around and, and trying to stay alive. Now what I would like to do is sit behind that island right there and just lob shells over the top, but I don't think I'm gonna be able to do that. Um, so we're gonna have to Try not to get depth struck here. And if I do, you guys can have a nice laugh and see what not to do as a cruiser. So until I'm spotted, I can run broadside and not have to worry about too much repercussion. Um, so I'm kind of... I'm going to get close to this island because this is my cover. And I'll kind of go out and around it. I don't want to take myself out of the fight, though. Um, but I'm in a fairly fast ship. If I was in a battleship, I wouldn't want to go out and around. You know, that would be a bad idea to go all the way through here because it would take me too long. And I wouldn't be there to help my team. So that's probably a destroyer in the cap. They're probably on that far edge. They just got into my visibility, so they're you know they're out there. So we're gonna keep going this way, and I'm turning. As you can see, my turret traverse is kind of slow in this ship. And we're gonna get out and around. So he was kind of out towards that way. Good to know. Coming around here. So if you're not sure about the consumables there, the little headphones, those are called sonar. They pick torpedoes up quicker. And they can also see ships. If you hit the start button, you look in the bottom right-hand corner, you'll see all the numbers for your ship. And the spotting range KM for sonar is 5.1. So if I have a destroyer smoke up on me, and I go unspotted, what I'll do, I'll go right at him, and I'll pop my sonar. You know, I'll hit that range, and now he's spotted in his smoke, and he has nowhere to go. Right? I'll see his torpedoes early. Um, he won't see me, but I'll see him. Um, and that's what the destroyers, the German destroyers, and a couple like the the Friesland, that's what they're famous for. They have they have sonar. They'll smoke sonar you. They'll push you. They'll roll their smoke. They'll hit their sonar, and they'll sit there and pummel you. And when you're in a destroyer, and they'll let their teammates pummel you. And there's nothing you can do about it until you get out of their sonar range. It's a real pain in the butt. So we're gonna keep coming around here. There is a there is a cruiser out there. I didn't see what it was because I was yapping. See if we can get him. He's on the other side of the island here. So we're going to keep going out. Hopefully there's no battleships over here. It's a Furataka. Okay. So we're going to step on the brakes. 
right? We're going to start nosing in to give that armor some angle. Now, he's kind of giving me some broadside, and I've got juiced up AP. So let's see what we can do here with this. He might be at too much of an angle, but see how he's opening up for me. And I got two guns on him. Not a lot. That's just enough. So we're going to do that, and we're going to back up. He stopped. Okay, that's fine. We'll have more shots soon. Look at those citadels. See all those fall in there center? I'm holding just above the water line so they kind of fall in. And he's dead here on this salvo. Alright, so there's my next victim. See that? Now I'm switching back to HE because I have a, a destroyer. The beauty of it is, is there's enough guys out here that I feel confident there's no battleships out here. Now if there's a battleship, if I can get close enough to him, I have lots of torpedoes to deal with him with. And this is what I'm talking about. These these, these German cruisers are just absolutely nasty. I have torps for the up-close and personal encounters. I've got good guns for the faraway stuff. I am fairly maneuverable. I've got sonar. I've got a plane. Um, so that's a fighter plane. It protects you from uh, carrier planes. A one-to-one -one trade. It'll take one plane with it before it dies. It will also spot ships. It'll spot torpedoes. Um, it's a very useful, and it's there for quite a while. So we're going to push this little dude. And I think if he's, uh, it's hard to tell what he do. You know, some guys might come this way, which wouldn't be smart because I'm here. Um, and he knows I'm here. Or he's going to go out this way. And um, there he is. So he's going out that way. I'll have him, I'll have shots on him here in a second. He's hitting our battleship and you can see it's kind of resetting the, resetting our cap there. I'm not afraid of him at this range. 7.8 kilometers. He's not going to do a lot of damage to me. We're going to give him full broadside so I can get all my guns on him. So you can see my little timer there. So it's 4.19 seconds. So that would be that first hash mark is 5 seconds on a ship going 20 knots. He's going a lot faster than 20 knots. So we're going to put that out here. And he's going away now. So you kind of put a little English on it. you got to feel that out. Feel it out. Boom. Two pens. See the little the single line with the two through it? Spread the needle. <laughs> Will that even go through? Nah, of course it won't. All right, so let's get turned and go at him because he's going to start harassing our battleships, and we don't want that. So I'm going to continue my turn backwards. I'm going to watch my knots as it rides. When it hits about three knots, I'm going to start going the other way. So about four knots I started going, and that makes a nice easy transition into my forward left turn from a reverse right turn, and it just kind of helps you. So... Um, I didn't have to really pay attention because nobody's over here harassing me. But when you have the time, watch that. And if you can make that nice smooth backwards and forwards, it saves you a little bit of time on your turn. So a cruiser's job is to deal with destroyers. Destroyers kill battleships. Battleships kill cruisers. Cruisers kill destroyers. And CVs kind of are the god. They harass the destroyers. They harass the cruisers. They harass the battleships. They do everything, right? But my job, I'm going to put myself between the battleship and that destroyer because I have better maneuverability to dodge his torpedoes. I have the sonar to see them, and I have the better guns to kill him. Um, so I'm going to protect him, kind of do a screening thing, right? If I can get there soon enough, you know. He's, he's coming back my way, but... Let's see, and I doubt that... Um, I doubt that Vostris is, is really going to let me see him again. Um, he can see me, so he's out there, you know somewhere now it would be nice if our carrier came over here uh, but we don't have a carrier I don't know what I'm saying I've obviously never played this game before if I had a carrier I would love it if he came over here and spotted this but we don't so here we are Vostris or that Vostris does not have smoke so if I can get him spotted and keep track of him he can't get away from me now over there on A it's Destroyers and one battleship and a cruiser against three battleships. So there's some torps. So we're gonna pop. We're gonna pop sonar now, so we can start seeing this a little bit quicker. And you can see it lit those up too, and that helps these guys dodge stuff when they can see them a little faster. So that kind of gave me a bearing. He's out here. He's probably traveling that way, so he's gonna be over here. But I want the cap more than I want anything. Um, and he's faster than me, so no matter what I do, he's gonna stay out there ahead of me. Here we go. 
Off we go to the wild blue yonder. So I'm using my mini map right now. I'm keeping an eye on out here in case he pops up. Ah, oh, there he is. I'm going to turn and help my guns get there a little bit quicker. He's five seconds and he's at that angle so I can pretty much just put it high and let it fly, as I like to say. And I can zoom in by clicking my right stick. Sometimes it's helpful. See, there's his torps that my sonar picked up. Now I'm going to throw it into three-quarter, which will dip my nose, and it helps me turn, and then I'll speed back up. So when you're trying to turn fast, if you just dip down to three-quarter, your ship will turn a skosh faster. As long as your rudders are fairly quick. But it will help you dig in and actually not drift a whole bunch. You'll kind of actually turn faster. And then you speed back up and dodge the torps. And those are fairly fast torps, too, so that's, that's nice that I was able to dodge those. Okay. I'm not going to chase him to the end of the map. He's wasting my time, and I'm not helping anybody by doing that. So what I will do is I'll start looking at these guys. They're not facing me. Their guns aren't facing me. They're not looking at me. So I'm going to start shooting at them a little bit. Oh, darn, I'm out of range. Because I, when I was next to him, he was in my um, refill station, and it gives my guns extra range. Now I'm not in range, and well, I can't hit him. So we got all three caps. we got the ship lead. Our, our uh, destroyers are doing work, killing things. Um, so we don't have to do much, right? We're just here. We're winning. That's what you want to do. Um, I'm playing, you know, I'm playing cat and mouse with this destroyer. I'll put up my planes, maybe help me spot some torps a little bit quicker. Um, but I'm going to start engaging these battleships. So I'm going to get facing him. And so... We talked about kind of wigging and wagging, right? So getting that out there so I get two guns. So I would shoot and then, you know, come back this way. They would shoot maybe. I might be able to dodge some volleys, you know, get that other gun into the mix. Let's put it to the test. If I die, not a huge loss. We should still win. You know, I'm not uh, not detrimental to the team. I'm not a destroyer. We're not losing. We're not, you know, they got the points. Lead. We're doing okay. So he's going to start turning at me, and he's trying to get his guns on me. That is his goal, because I am a juicy target. And I'm going to let him. If he's shooting at me, you know, he's not shooting at someone else. So there he's shooting AP. I'm going to turn in, and you can see those glance off. You see that, how it's shattered? Those are ricochets. And it's because I had my armor angled correctly. Um, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to get some torques. I know he's got probably a 25 to 30 second reload. There's his other set of guns. That did some damage, but nothing too crazy. Here comes his secondary battery. I'm gonna start switching back the other way. Now New York's swinging in. I'll probably get killed here. That's okay. I'm keeping them busy. We'll get Torps. I'm going to throw these ahead of where he's going because he's going to continue his turn. We'll throw some ahead and we'll throw some here. There we go. Um, I gave him too much broadside and I died. So that's what happens when you give him too much broadside. So, uh, let's see if he runs into my torpedoes, though. But as you can see, it didn't, it wasn't detrimental to the teams. You know, we're still going to win this one just fine. So I took the chance to, to do something to kind of show. I got three two torpedo hits there. I caused a flood, and that looks like it's permanent. That's a, a double flood that's permanent. So, and he's got a fire. He's not going to live. Um, even with World Rebuild, he cannot overcome that large amount of damage. Oh, he was able to damage con it, though. So he burnt a damage con. Now, um, what is this? This is a Peter Velinky. So his secondaries could maybe start a fire, and that would be that would be detrimental to his health. Um, but really, his big old AP guns. See that? That's nice. That was some good shooting. Um, the armor on the New York's probably not very good in the back, so angling's not going to help you. Going straight away is not going to help you. It's probably going to have an overmatch no matter what. Yep, he's dead. And we do have a cruiser left. He needs to get up here, though. Oh, he's almost dead. That's why he's hanging back. Well, we have our gauge, so he can hunt the DD. But we're going to kill that battleship and that battleship. That's going to give us a bunch of points. Um, destroying enemies, uh, 80 points. And that'll probably win the game for us. We'll get another 40 points when we kill this battleship. So whatever we gain from having the three caps plus that, we're going to point out pretty quick. Oh, and here's our little buddy. 
coming up. And you know. Oh, they got the they got our Tennessee, so that, that helps them. But uh Mackinson's not gonna make it here. He's gonna die here probably in the next two salvos from this Peter Belinky. Now I don't like the way this guy's firing his guns. He's getting good hits. But if he were to double tap his trigger and fire his whole salvo at once, his guns would probably be a little bit more accurate. Um, because the boat's not moving and rocking, it's a weird mechanic that actually does does matter. Um, I don't know why he's trying to save his shells. Oop. Man, I thought that was going to kill him. All right. So there you go. So now we're at 978 for points. 981. We're climbing. We're going to point out here very quickly before this Foster's can really hurt anybody. He might get some torp hits on this Peter Valinky, but um, they're little torps, and here they come. They're little torps, and they're not going to kill him. Oh, ran out of time. Look at that. Son of a gun. Again, I didn't look at the clock. That's my thing i got to work on. So that's kind of some cruiser play. It wasn't the most exciting of games. Um, took fourth. Not a huge damage. Kind of hung out. Whatever. So let's switch to a battleship. And I'm going to play... I'm going to play a higher tier battleship because I, I love playing battleships. Um, so I'm going to grab my favorite, which is the Massachusetts B, And we'll go out for a stroll. Now... Um, we can talk about boosters and stuff, too. When you're leveling up a ship, you know, you want to have your XP boosters on. And uh, and then if you need, like, I need Commander and I need Global, so I'm running boosters on those. Um, I should probably put a Credit Booster on. And this booster, I need to convert a whole bunch of these. Holy smokes. Um, we'll just convert them to that. These boosters, I always run the. I tend to run these on my destroyers more than I run these on... Um, my battleships. In standard matches, this is pretty typical for me. Now, if you put an XP booster on, it will boost all of these as well. Um, so keep that in mind. I just don't want to waste mine because when there's a special event, I'm going to burn through them. So I'm kind of just taking the hit. It's not as efficient. Um, oh well. I'll live. Um, your ship upgrades is kind of your preference. Um, on this one, I'm, I'm running, you know, an AA mod. I don't really... My, my traverse speed is okay enough. Um, I run steering gears on all my battleships so that I can dodge torpedoes a little bit quicker. I have a concealment mod on here just for that in, that incoming fire dispersion. Um, kind of screws with the enemy a little bit. Um, target acquisition isn't horrible, but I find this to be a little bit more useful. And I can also move around a little bit easier with that negative 10% on my detectability. And then here we have the artillery plotting room, which is kind of a staple. If the ship has it, you kind of run that. It's that, you know, dispersion really into it. Um, here I have the secondary battery mod. Um, I won't run that on this. I'm kind of waiting for a fun ship to put that on. Um, so kind of feel what you want. Um, AA mod wouldn't be horrible. Uh, main battery mod wouldn't be horrible, but this is what I run to get that accuracy closer to what I like. Um, and that varies per ship, you know. Destroyers, um, I like to run a propulsion mod to make them go faster backwards and forwards to get that speed acceleration so you can dodge torpedoes if you're sitting in your smoke. Um, um, aiming systems mod, you could run the AA mod, that might not be a bad idea. Concealment mod, pretty much always what you run, right? Um, but it's up to you also, and this is torpedo mod. This is, this is just how I set them up, and you can switch these around and go from there. But let's run let's run a battleship and kind of check this out. <laughs> so battleship's job is a lot of tanking damage for your team and giving damage for your team. So um, it's a lot of give and take. Your hit points, you trade them. They're a resource. They're valuable, but you have to use them. And um, you use your big guns to kind of keep people at bay right? If you have a cruiser pushing in and, and you have a destroyer out there, well, it's time to let the cruiser know that, hey, that's my little buddy. Stop it. Go away. Kill him. You know, kill it now. Kill it with fire. If a destroyer pops up and you're confident you can hit them, shoot at the destroyer. Kill them first because they're your biggest threat. All right. So with us, we have an Akatsuki and we have a Fiji. All right. And then we're going to go into the menu and we're going to take a look. So we have a Kiev and a Moss. Prince Eugen, Wichita, there's a fire spammer. Wichita's very much a fire spammer. 
North Carolina, Colorado, Brandenburg, Richelieu. So I know that there's two sets of 16-inch 45 caliber guns, the same kind of guns I have. These are small guns, and these are, six, I believe this has 15 or 16-inch guns. And then the Iowa has the 16-inch 50 cal guns, which really hurt. So I know there's, there's some battleships out there that could hurt me. Um, these guys are a pain in the ass. Wichita with the fire spam. Prince Eugen is particularly tough and and can hurt you. And then, you know, DD's just doing DD things is, is a pain. We have a New Jersey, Aroma Heinrich, and we have our own set of very good fire spammers with an AP boat and a nasty, nasty torpedo boat and a fun gun boat. So we have a fun little mix here. And I have the div on my side. So hopefully they'll work together and hopefully they're pretty decent. We'll make some things happen. So I, I kind of like to start with AP loaded on my battleship. I would start with HE loaded on my, my cruiser because I could switch really quick. Um, I shoot a lot of AP through my battleships. Um, so I like to have AP loaded. That way I can if I can catch somebody going broadside when they're trying to get somewhere in the opening moments of the game, I can kill them quick. All right, here comes the Richie. All of its guns are in the front and they do break. So, gosh, that'd be cool if we could just break him and turn him into a giant torpedo, wouldn't it? Spotted. I'll start turning back in and get my armor angled. I'm going to cut my speed a little bit. I don't need to go rushing in there. There's a destroyer sitting in there. There he is. Ping him. Try to get people to shoot at him a little bit. What else we got coming over? The Susia. Badass. That's a great fire spammer right there. So I'm constantly looking up at my mini map, so I know there's a battleship sitting right there, and I kept my rear gun facing to my right, and it is loaded. Sadly, I cannot hit him, but if he comes out, I will remember that, and I'll use my rear turret of justice to hit him. I'll get a few little points. So there's a Wichita. Yes. So he's a big threat to my destroyer, and I want to protect him. So I'm going to push to full. I'm going to come out. I'm going to swing my guns to him. I can shoot him there. He's giving me broadside. I'm going to put a little bit of lift. Oh, he's turning back in. We're going to put those there and see if we can hit him. It's, I'm probably going to miss because he's turning so much. He's got a really fast rudder. So we caught some superstructure there and got an overpin. I'm going to put a plane up and pop a heel. And I'm going to use my left bumper. And I'm going to try to split these corpse the best I can. There's the Wichita radar. So I'm going to take one of these torpedoes on the nose. That's just the way it is. Now he's spotting my ACAT, which isn't cool. Don't appreciate it. So there's a flood. See, I didn't damage con my fire so that I can put my flood out. So I can shoot him over that rock because there's no indicator. I got four overpens, but I did some damage to him. Beautiful. Back right back out. Come to daddy. So I'm in the smoke, so I'm hidden for a few seconds here. I'm going to stay in the smoke as much as I can. I'm going to let my guns reload. And then I'm going to pop out. And spot that Wichita. And there we go. I'll take a nice little snapshot. And see what they do. So I hit him for about 5,800 there. Not a great shot. I got four overpens and a bounce. So I probably caught the top of a turret. Um, their battleship has effectively taken himself out of hitting me. So I'm not too scared. Um, their DD, I don't know where he's at. I'm not too worried about him. I have a Fiji sitting behind me. There's those torps. Okay, so he's going to... He came out, but I'm going to dodge these torpedoes. I'm going to take one more on my nose. No, I'm not. I'm going to dodge that one, too. And then I kept my guns there. And we're going to throw those there. And that's going to kill that Wichita. Two pens, five over pens. It's enough to get the job done. So now I'm going to do this. You know, I'm going to say, hey, need you, brah. That cat's going okay. I hear you. I'm coming. I'm going to pop a heal. I'm going to switch to HE because I know that stupid little destroyer is out here. Right? Now, Richelieu is going to come out to my right. So 
I have the brakes on. I'm going to try to get this thing to back up, back behind here. Um, and I'm going to miss out probably on a nice shot on the Richelieu. Um, with my, I could have AP loaded in and really do some work on him. But as you can see, by looking at my mini-map, I know this game's probably going to be a loss unless something really crazy happens. Um, because my whole right flank is gone on Alpha. It is what it is. It happens. I'm going to take a blind shot at him there. I broke the secondaries and did what I did there. Oh, so he he's smart. He waited for me to fire my guns, and then he fired at me. That's very smart. I'm going to put up a plane. Keep him spotted there. I'm going to load back to AP. Probably should have did that before. Brandenburg's coming in behind me, so I'm going to start turning my butt this way. Richelieu's just about dead. I'm going to put out my fire. I'm going to keep backing up, because there may be torpedoes coming. Oh, there they are. Now, I shouldn't have put my fire out, but I thought about the torpedoes too late. That's going to cause a flood, because it didn't hit me in the torpedo belt. We're hold below the water line. We're flooding quickly. So here's where a good teammate comes in handy. If I can keep him close to me, I might even get on here and... Um, Akatsuki, uh, is my voice chat working? Akat, I need will to rebuild, dear up, bro. I have a flood on me right now. I don't know if he can hear me or not, but we're going to try. I do have a heal that I can use, but I would really rather he came in here and helped me out a little bit. So that little bastard's sitting right there firing at me. that out. I was able to survive without any will to rebuild, thankfully. Um, that's why it's important to manage your your damage cons. Um, if I would have left that fire burn, I was thinking I was safe. I thought about the torpedoes late. Um, I would have been able to just damage con that flood immediately and not lose all those hit points. I lost a lot of hit points right there. Um, so here's my will to rebuild. That's gonna That got me, you know, I already had to pop my heal. I could have left it, but I wanted to get those those points so that this Brandenburg couldn't kill me if he had a shot. Kind of trying to think ahead here. Yeah, I'm located. You can see that on the right side of my screen there. Kind of in the, the rocks. It says located. That means that, that destroyer is running like a twist and track. And I'm his closest enemy. So now, the Susie is his closest enemy. Um, hopefully he's running his sonar. And he can see any torpedoes coming at him. And he doesn't get whacked by this Brandenburg. So I'm going to switch to the Brandenburg. I want to get him off the board as soon as I can. And I'm going to pal around with this uh, cruiser because he can help me kill this destroyer very quickly. As long as he doesn't get nuked. Smile for the flash. And those will most definitely kill him because he has hardly any hit points left. So it's one shell, one pen, and he died. Okay, so not sure what these guys are doing out here. Sitting in the back of the map. Normally doesn't win you the match. Sometimes it can, but um, not very often. Torpedoes, direct front. So there's the torpedoes. I'm going to put my plane up too. Hopefully he doesn't catch any of those. Good, he's able to skirt them. Now what I want is that Iowa to go broadside. I cannot shoot the mass, so not going to worry about him. That Iowa is going to go broadside. So you see my little ticker there, it says 10 seconds. So there's 10, and he's in a turn and he's not going very fast. So we're actually gonna back that up. Oh yeah, he's going real slow. So we're gonna put that here, and we're gonna fire. That sucks. Flooded him out, all right. And those look pretty good. They got potential, and that was a pretty decent hit there, about 11, 12,000. Um, no Citadel though sucks but it's life so I do have to worry about torpedoes coming around the corner on me here but um, we're just kind of trying to smack some damage on these boys I'm going to push his smoke it's not going to get to sit there in his smoke Colorado battle ends in five minutes 
I'm gonna save my one front gun for this destroyer in case he's still in here. If he's smart, you know, might wait for me to, you know, do whatever. And then kind of light me up. Not sure where he's at. So Wagon's there, he's there. You know what? I'm just going to. Oh, he's going away now. Yeah. I don't really have any fun targets here. Okay. Spotted. Could be spotted by any of them. Colorado's going to be close, and he almost looks like he's going to give me some broadside here. So I will start my turn now. I want to cut right next to this rock. Nosing in. He disabled the turret. I will damage on that so he doesn't break it. And at this point, I want to have all my guns because I, I want to get I want to get some good damage here, just to try to have a decent game for myself because it is a loss. Now that's some horrible dispersion, and it happens. Dirty tiger. Um, so I'll be dead on next salvo from pretty much any of the battleships. My rear gun. See how my little mountain is there next to the distance? That means that one or all my guns is blocked. So I wasn't going to be able to get a shot off, and. I know my rear turret was covered by that island, so yeah, that was game. So in that instance, there's really nothing you could do to win, right? Um, the whole team over here on the Alpha side, they got pushed by too many ships and they died. Um, so sometimes you can play perfectly and you're going to lose. Sometimes you just have a bad game and you die really early because of something stupid. You know, you got caught turning. That happens. Sometimes you die. Um... If you're playing with people who get really mad at you for that, find new people because you, you need better people in your life. Um, everybody makes mistakes. Everybody dies from something stupid. Everybody runs into an island from time to time. Um, if people say that they don't do that, well, they're lying. And uh, they need to grow up a little bit because shit happens when you party naked. And, uh, you know, what are you going to do? You know what happens. Just move on. Start your next game. Learn from that mistake. So I'm going to play a carrier. I'm not a great carrier player. So this isn't going to be like, oh my god, he did 110,000 damage. If I get 40k damage, it'll be a good game. Um, I'm just going to kind of show you the basics of what to do. And I hope this is helping you. Again, the basics, you know, looking at your mini-map, seeing what's going on, be cognizant of how the tempo of the game is going, and then just playing and learning, getting good people that know how to play the game. And that's what's really hard is finding good information. That's kind of why, you know, I took the time to make this and not fill your head with a bunch of BS, just kind of the basics, you know. This is what's happening. This is what you should, you know, these are the things you should try to do from there. Um, <laughs> yeah, Krom, right, 200K? Yeah, all right. We're going to throw that out there. Krom, one of my followers here, wants to see a 200K game, so we're just going to have to do it. Um... But this stuff is just universal, right? It's not how you play. It's what you should be doing while you play your style. Um, if you're losing a lot, maybe you should change your style, especially if it's if you're dying early a lot. You know, If you die early every once in a while and you're not getting a lot of damage or kills, you're probably not playing right. You know, If you're getting lots of damage, lots of kills, you're making it through almost the whole game, and you just get overwhelmed, well, eh, hey, you give it the old college try, and there's you know nothing wrong with that. Um, Action station. So now we're going to look for the big AA ships. And at Tier 5, and you'll learn this as you go, the California has some of the best AA you could ever hope for. So I'm going to give that thing a wide berth. And generally speaking, American ships have good AA. Um, even their, their destroyers are decent. Some of them suck. You'll learn which ones. Um, Germans, on the average, don't have the best. Um, the Colorado, the New Mexico, and Cali are going to have pretty good AA. The Oba's going to be a little light. But so we're going to go find this Mahan, and we're going to go harass the holy hell out of him. And we want our HE bombers, because these are the skip bombers. Um, you're going to see the funny little reticle. And so each one of those lines is where the bombs hit the water and they skip. So on a battleship, you would put them kind of in between the lines and drop. On a destroyer, you want to damn near put the line on them and drop the bomb directly on them. That seems to work really, really good. Sparty to Nigram. Yeah, that'll be the day. I don't like playing carrier that much, dude, to get that good. All right, so here they come. I'm going to drop 
think I might drop some fighters here. We'll see what's going on. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll drop some fighters. See what they do. All right, so what we got going on here? So we can see we got some decent AA. There's our destroyer. His AA was giving him away, made me look. So I spotted those torps early though. So that's helpful for the team. I know where he's at. He's gonna sit in his smoke for a while. We're gonna let him, right? Um, I'm not gonna get too close because he does have decent AA. I'm gonna go do something else for a second and then I'll come back and bug him. There's Colorado. There's a Sharn Horse. So I'm gonna sneak around here in between the bubbles, the AA bubble. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw some stuff at this here Sharn Horse. So we're gonna try to get him lined up here to kind of flat broadside. He's moving away and then we're gonna drop it there. And so we want these bombs to hit his superstructure. Bounce. And I'm kind of doing it far out so you kind of see there. And I went over the top. So it's been a couple weeks since I've played the, this freaking thing. Like I said, I suck anyway. So we'll try it again. I'm going to take torps this time. Uh, the Russians drop all their torpedoes at once. They drop all their bombs at once. Ah, there's our, our little buddy, the Mahan. He's spotted. So right now he's spotted, so I'm not going to bug him, okay? I'm gonna let that Atlanta. Uh, they're on the opposite side though, so nobody can really shoot him. Uh, what's over there? New Mexico's with him. I know there's a California over there, so I don't wanna throw away my planes. I'm just gonna kinda sneak over here and see what we got going on. Kind of a wide little bird. There's some bombers though, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop my fighter planes on top of those bombers. We'll try to deplane him as quickly as we can. Hey, there's a... Okay, he's gonna turn into these, so they would never arm in time. Not a million years. So we're just gonna fake bomb him, which sometimes actually works. Kind of uh, makes him do weird stuff. So I'm losing planes because I'm in all this bad AA bubble stuff here, so I wanna get out of that. Okay, him and let people know like hey if you can do it so i lost my whole squadron there because of all that aa so you gotta be careful that um you know, what you're doing is actually worth it so the whole team went left right so i need to actually move my carrier and you have autopilot so you go to your map view and you hold down it'll be like square on playstation it's x here and your carrier will just drive itself there. You don't even have to worry about it. Let's go ahead and just it. We're going to go off this way. We're going to go harass this uh, Sharnhorst and Colorado and help these guys out real quick. Because there's just too much AA for me to be over there. I'm going to lose all my ships. It's not worth the trade. Thanks for the follows, guys. I, uh, I missed a couple people there. I was kind of concentrating on this. I appreciate it. So I um, I think kill stealing is not a thing. I'm a firm believer of just get rid of the enemy quickly. So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna drop some shit on this uh, Sean horse. So I kind of put that line on him, but real close. So they should fall down on top. I got one hit and it was a shatter. What a bummer. So I'll take these over there. Probably hit that Colorado. His AA is so good. A lot of good AA boats. Again, the whole team went left. They didn't hold this side. This is kind of a weird one. You know, you got your balls over here and the, the shaft. I'm just kidding. Um, so we do want to take these. We probably could have tried to hold B a little bit though they kind of they just kind of gave up on that so uh, this is going to be a tough one to win it will be a very now and now that our destroyer is dead it'll be very hard um yeah I could if I was a better carrier player it would help the team out tremendously but um I'm not so they just have to deal with it so as you come in your cone gets smaller I'm going to pull back on my throttle and 
drop those right there. I'm not sure. He's going to turn. So I should catch him with a couple of those. We'll see what happens here. Let me switch back to these. I keep oscillating so I don't run out of planes. Yeah, I got one hit with a flood. Maybe it's permanent. It almost looks like it's permanent. Oh, yeah. He's flooding. Cool. So I want to keep moving my carrier Attention. to safe places. Yeah. Colorado was able to get his flood out. So this guy's going to see me if I don't start hitting him. So we're going to come back this way. Well, he's going to have a hell of an AA bubble with him. We'll try it. Let's see what we can do. I need to find that destroyer. Let's cut through here and see if we can find a destroyer real quick. Um, not that the team will shoot him, but just try to do my job here. This has been a difficult one. There he is right there. He doesn't have his AA off. Spotting the torpedoes, which helps my team. Got him for fourteen hundred. That's a good. That's a good hit on a destroyer. I mean, think about how few points they have. Oh, I'm launching fighters, so I can't launch my stuff. Ah. <sighs> Problem is, is I'm getting spotted now because I've just, I've ran out of map. I've ran out of team. Um, the DD is smoked up, so I'm going to leave him be for a second. We're going to go to the Gneisen out here and throw some corpse at him. Watch those go in. I forget that these are slow. I probably should have let him a little bit more, but they're going to hit. Hopefully he did get inside the arming zone. He's going to take four of them. I'm happy with that. We'll go to Skippies, and we'll start picking again. Skip bombs. Not the best demonstration of how to play carrier, obviously, because I suck, but I'm just trying to get down the basics for you. Spot the destroyer. Keep fire spammers from sitting and fire spamming. Look for the heavy AA ships um, and try to do your best to stay away from them. Should fall that short so those shells hit him in that superstructure. I only have so many planes left. I got got deep plane because of all that heavy AA in the very beginning of the match. My carrier's broadside. I don't expect it to live much longer. Come out and swing in. Wasn't able to get far enough out. I'm gonna miss that torpedo by a mile, and I got dev struck anyway. So, yeah, there you go. Um, as you can see, carrier's not an easy. Let me check. Not an easy thing to play well. Um, you got it takes a lot of practice. If I played it a lot, I'd get better at it, but I don't. So I'm not going to be that good. But don't get discouraged. Just keep at it. And that's that's discouraging. Okay. So I look at this and I see that I'm higher on their leaderboard we're tied with the gade that's a huge issue okay when i didn't do anything i did 19,000 damage i had some defense but i had no caps nothing to speak of and the gade tied me in xp he should be up here in the top three right um maybe top four so that's pretty discouraging that he was not able to do a little bit more um, maybe they're just, maybe their carrier player was good and he was harassing him like he should be. Um, their destroyer player did a really good job of staying in close to these battleships, 
to keep that AA. At that one point that he didn't, I was able to get some hits on him, but in the beginning, I would have deplaned myself. So you got to pick your battles, but letting people know that you're there and paying attention is something. I made 42,000, so it wasn't a complete loss, I guess, but it was a defeat. What are you going to do? Um, so yeah, that's, that's some basics there on gameplay and I'm, I'm running out of time on my day, so I can't really show you how to like smoke, the smoke sonar thing works on destroyers. Um, but you'll, f that's just smoking up when you got a destroyer close to you and popping your sonar and getting them spotted when they can't see you. That's the basis of it, right? And you'll figure that out. But I hope that this kind of basic tutorial has answered some of your questions, um, Kind of shown you the basics, you know, keeping paying attention to your mini map, looking at the roster, seeing what you're up against, um, learning how to look at the armor on ships um, with the idea that when you get a new ship, check out its armor, see what it's capable of bouncing. You know, 32 millimeter, you know, anything 29 to 32 millimeter armor can bounce 16 inch shells. Um, I give you the information on how to calculate that out more if you want. Um, that's the basically the only one I keep in my mind. Um, yeah. And you'll just, you'll learn the rest by playing. You know, commanders come by playing, getting some crates. Um, and the, that's your biggest, those are your biggest things, right? Is commanders, getting them leveled up, making sure you got the right ones. And, uh, and you know, just playing, making some friends, watching some more YouTubers er, and streamers, Twitch guys. And learning the game, learning the basics, and having fun. Just have some fun, and you'll be you'll be fine. Um, thanks for watching, and I uh, hope to see you guys out there on the sea. If you have any questions, comment below, um, ping me, whisper me, uh, comment on my YouTube. I will be putting this on my YouTube channel, um, Sparty Six Eight One. And uh, yeah, hope to hear from you soon.